enough incentive, you know, from federal government through the anchor program scheme, through other, you know, um, programs that we have, you know, the GES and other programs that we have in the Ministry of Agriculture, you know, to encourage agribusiness and upscale, you know, investment in the... Uh, if, as a result of climate change, the amount of rainfall is um, reduced, um, then, of course, um, that will affect the flow downstream. And invariably, that will affect um, plant production, except if now the farmers are well informed to now plant crops that will not need too much water. You know, so, uh, and this is um, the, the things that we are trying to Thank you very much. Okay. My pleasure. All right. And uh, let me also welcome to this program Zakaria U Darazu Abdul Rashid, who is General Manager, Network of Stations of NIMET. That's the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. All right. As usual, we acquaint you with the procedure. At the appropriate time on this program, you can get to join in the discussion in the studio. The various platforms will be on your screens. We advise you to take advantage of them. However, for those who will be calling in, we always say this every Tuesday. Do us a favor, when your call gets through, turn down the volume of your TV set. Just reduce the volume. And uh, that's the way to avoid the hurlback or echo. And the best way to know your call has been passed through is you'll see your name appear on screen. Now, once your name appears on screen, it means your call has been passed through to the studio. Just go right ahead with your question or comment. Do not bother about the greetings. Just go straight to the point. And uh, we encourage you to make it as brief as possible so that others can also get on the platform. So once again, welcome to NTA Tuesday Live. Let's begin by taking a general look at agriculture in these past two years. And uh, it's just a, a broad outlook, agriculture in the past two years. Let's begin with the governor of uh, Kebbi State. Thank you. I think we a, a good perhaps the best starting point is to acknowledge the clarities that had come from the federal government that yes agriculture is the way to go recognition of the plus million market and in fact in our ability to compete internationally so the economic policies of the last two years the agricultural policy had helped. For the first time, we have seen significant buying of Nigerian agricultural commodities from other countries out within the sub-region and even outside the sub-region. So that suggests that the policy framework in place is working, and that suggests that if we sustain it, we will be able to record more growth Oh. particularly in, uh, in the light of data from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, which confirmed that despite the recession, despite the economic downturn, agricultural output had contributed uh, to no, not less than 5% growth per annum in the Nigerian economy. All right. Hmm. Well, we'll look at those, uh, uh, those areas in uh, finer detail as we go ahead. But let's... Uh, come to Governor uh, Badaru Abuakar and uh, generally opening comments on what agriculture has been like in this past two years. Well, I believe uh, the message sent to us, the governors, and probably uh, the government is clear. Uh, the days of uh, oil economy is over, our oil is almost over. So there is urgent need to diversify the economy. Hence, the government is putting a lot of effort, both at federal and at state level, to diversify the economy. And to do that, tea yields improving from 2.53 tons per hectare in the previous years to 7, 8 tons per hectare. And uh, we see production costs uh, dropping significantly because of the bulk purchases of uh, input uh, that has been given to farmers, availability of funds for farmers to buy at the right time, at the right price, uh, as well as new initiatives uh, developed in production so that the cost of production became less, while production increased, thereby creating competitiveness, and then believe sustainability will happen. All right. You did. Uh, you made mention of uh, 
a key input. Fertilizers, that's one area I would like to return to in greater detail. Um, but let's hear from uh, the director of uh, Greek Business Processing and Marketing itself. It's, you know, this is, this is um, a pretty large scope for you. So first we might even begin to ask, is agriculture business now? Have we widened our processing? And what's the general outlook in marketing? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sidis Stover. And let me, uh, first of all, commend uh, President Muhammad Buhari uh, for uh, making it very clear right from the inception of this administration that agri is the way to go, like Governor, His Excellency Governor Bagudu mentioned. Yes, Nigeria has over 923,770 kilometers square of land. Yes, Nigeria is made up of 84 million hectares of arable land. Yes, out of the four major rivers in Nigeria, Nigeria has two major rivers that transfers the whole length of Nigeria. Yes, Nigeria has the population. Nigeria has the market. Yes, Nigeria has fertile soil. With this, we can say Nigeria has the potential. But nobody eats potential. What we eat is food. <laughs> nobody drinks oil, nor smokes gas. What we eat is food. This is why we need to commend His Excellency for giving a clear court directive to Chief Aldo Ogbe, the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. And this explained in West Africa, we are doubling rice production. We are improving our irrigation system. We are making uh, mechanized, we are, uh, we are mechanized farming very close to the farmers. We are improving our processing. Just before the inception of this administration, the total numbers of improved integrated rice meal in the country stood at about 10, but we are having close to 26 integrated rice meals in the country. This shows we are making progress. And to capital, the total growth of agriculture in 2016 as brought forward by the Bureau of Statistics stood at 4%, and agriculture is still growing, and we are hoping to hit 6% this year. Thank you very much. All right. It's um, nice to reel out all these statistics, but I suppose there's one man here who will tell us from the perspective we all want to listen to, <laughs> and that's uh, Prince Ike Ubaka, who's uh, the farmer here now. Well, um, you know, in leadership, you dictate the direction. You show the light for others to follow. Yes, at the takeoff of this administration, the President, His Excellency, President Mahmoud Wali, actually mentioned and showed the light where to go. That because of the fluctuation and the instability of the oil market, sector skewed all the policies. So we still drive that as you and us. The critical stakeholders are not involved, they say. Because when you say the critical stakeholders are involved in policy design, we should know the contributions they make. But in this case, the policies of this nation is public sector skewed. The private sector is not there. And you cannot be developing policies for me to buy in when I have no contribution, there's no inclusiveness. And at the end of the day, you want me to own it and drive it. So it's good to make that leadership directive. This is the way to go. Another thing, diversification in agriculture, all facets, not cereals alone, rice, yes. Our target shouldn't be rice for two years. We have different segments of agriculture. So it's supposed to be integrative and holistic. Integration 
like in Jigawa, I know that most of the sesame seeds I've eaten in Tokyo, Tokyo, Japan, came from Jigawa State, Hadija Plain. Then if we are talking about the area in Jigawa, people producing this sesame seed in Hadija Plain and Harugo, you find out that nobody is mentioning them. So there are other commodities that we have. There was a time textile is budget dependent. Now look at it. 2015, you know the halubolo about the budget. 2016, the same thing. The performance of the budget was not up to 30%. And this year again, we have passed the budget and we're in May. And we're talking about rice. You see, if our agriculture is budget dependent, we will not get out of the woods. Right. That is one. Then the research we are talking about, research itself is treated, which is the backbone of agriculture. Research is treated as public sector thing. You will see people from assistant research officers trained to professorate level. And when they're supposed to be contributive with all volume of investment in their training, they will be retired. And then there will be no follow-up. So in the last two years, we have not seen, we have seen a lot of people existed, the research. We have seen a lot of people, the, the extension, comatose. So there is something that we need to get back from our agricultural system so that the private sector will buy in and then it will be society industrial linkage, okay. all inclusive. Thank you. Okay, thanks. We will return to some of the issues you raised, but let's come to um, the general manager, Network of Stations of uh, Nigerian Meteorological Agency. And it's a uh, straightforward uh, question to you to uh, set this discussion from your perspective. Has nature been clement? Have we taken advantage of what we know about the climate? Much uh, uh, ex expected. So Nigerian Meteorological Agency came up with the scenario rainfall prediction, which is more of a science-based uh, climate information. What we do is to enlighten the farmers that at such a time of the year, it's good time for you to plant, and the, the rains will start around this time, which is the onset. When we said onset, it's not the, uh, the first rain that falls. That's the mistake most farmers or most people are thinking. Onset are determined by some scientific uh, uh, indices. So, but when we said the onset, based on our uh, seasonal rainfall prediction, once the farmers go by those uh, guidance, and then they go, uh, for instance, we said the rainfall over the northern part of the country is really quite different from what applies in the south. The southern part have earlier onset of the rains, and as you go far into the country, to the extreme north, these uh, rains keep, uh, what you call now, in increasing. For instance, in the delta area, you have about 3,100 millimeters of rain over the year, while at the extreme uh, north, just about maybe 400 millimeters. So if you look at that, NIMED now will tell the farmers, you that are in the extreme north, where you have more of uh, cereals, it's expected that you plant early or early maturing uh, seeds, mm -hmm. crops, and then you get fertilizers and then other inputs. By so doing, if the farmers go by this our uh, prediction, we observe that they are getting uh, better output from their crops, and then they reduce risk because not going by the prediction will either at the, at the beginning of the season, the, the, the crops may just uh, may die, thus they will burn because the, the fertilizer has been applied. If the rains are not enough, they will burn the, the seeds. Two, again, the crops may not even uh, uh, grow because the herbicides that may be applied around this time may kill the seeds around uh, the, those times. So Nigerian Meteorological Agency, to a large extent, over the years, have assisted farmers in seeing that they have the best of uh, their production and reduce risks. All right. Well, uh, Governor Bagudu, you heard uh, what uh, Prince Ikebubaka said. The of Nigeria 
president of the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria. I don't, I don't, that's as high as it can be. Uh, a, a, a policy uh, a framework which, uh, under the able leadership of the acting president, that provides a platform for program design, input into policy making, so that we can achieve better outcomes. Um, I, I, again, it's not correct to say that the emphasis is on rice. The Uncle Boros program is not a rice program. It's, an, it's a program where each state, each commodity association can organize themselves and approach and get funding and uh, also support. What we did with rice is some of us felt it's a low-hanging fruit because historically many farmers are involved in rice farming. And for the record, 36, the Nigerian, 36 Nigerian states produce rice plus FCT. And so it, it's easy for us to start with uh, a commodity which the value addition is significant, especially given the fact that foreign exchange earnings have dropped significantly. So a traded commodity like rice provides an opportunity for you to excite investors, to excite, to mobilize stakeholders and achieve more value addition. And, and that's what we did. In Kevi State, we, under the Uncle Boros program, our rice farmers borrowed about 14 billion. But the value of output making huge inroads into increased production of rice. How, how, how does it play out that um, rice is still being brought in to take away the gains that we have, we are making in this production? Well, earlier on in my introduction, I spoke about rice being an internationally traded commodity like many other commodities. We are competing with other countries and they use all, si all kind of uh, distortionary measures okay. so that they can sell to us rather than buy, to, buy from us. Some countries have huge public sector rice stocks which they, they auction occasionally at significant discount below the, uh, uh, the, before, below, below the market prices. And these economic agents being driven by profit will always attempt to bring such rice, even if its quality has been adjudged poor by the, our regulators, particularly NAPDAC. So there has been significant pressure by those import lobbies to continue importing, even when the Nigerian uh, stakeholders have embraced government policy and uh, uh, we, we are moving very close to self-sufficiency. I can even say maybe you are even there. Okay. All right. Well, our phone lines are already open, and the very first call tonight is coming from Kebi State. Well, okay. Well, we've lost that call, but uh, <laughs> it's not worthy that the first call uh, was coming in from Kebi. So unfortunately, we lost that call. But uh, we would like to encourage you to keep those calls coming and. Uh, uh, we'll take them as they come. But let's move on to uh, uh, Governor Abubakar. Now, the, perhaps this might be some of the gaps in policy that the uh, uh, president of the World Farmers Association was re referring to, these distortions that are caused by other countries that have a huge stake in, particularly rice production, for instance. Well, that, that, that is true, uh, and in any uh, production or any business, you expect competition, you expect distortion. Uh, how you manage to live through it uh, depends on how well you present your situation. Mm -hmm. And our situation, like I said, is presented very well. Uh, we have huge support from the federal government uh, to produce rice. We are working day and night to produce rice sustainably, increasing yield, reducing, again, reducing cost of production, so that uh, we can compete with whatever uh, country that produces right, uh, rice, as long as it is the right quality of rice that is uh, uh, good for human consumption. So uh, I, I believe we are aware of that situation, and uh, uh, we are working hard 
to see how we prevent such rice from coming to Nigeria so that they don't affect the health of our people. But for quality rice, like I said, we are getting close to being in competition with the world, uh, price-wise. Uh, the cost of production for rice in Kevi, Jigawa, and Kano, and most of the states now is becoming lower and lower and lower by day because of the because of the economic of scale involved, because of cross-stream farmers, like I said, because of so many reasons, input, uh, qu the prices of input, and so many reasons. So we are getting close to having the same price of uh, rice internationally, and we can compete uh, internationally. That is one. Two, I want to also come on the issue raised by the chairman or president of APAN that uh, it is only rice that we have been concerned with. That is not true. Because uh, in Jigar, for instance, uh, we work on five crops heavily. Rice, wheat, sesame seed, groundnut, and soybeans. We also support the normal production of millet, corn, and maize. But to every state look at the climate condition, the water situation, analyze its own competitiveness, decide to decide what to grow. In Jigawa, like he said, we have good potential for sesame seed. We have very good potential for rice around Hadeja Valley. We have good potential uh, to produce uh, wheat around uh, Ringim area and Burnukuru area. We have good potential to produce uh, granite again around Burnukuru, Kazaure, and Bavra. We have we we we, we identify areas where we have comparative advantage on producing these uh, uh, products competitively and embark on them. In fact, we produce more sesame than we do with rice. Mm -hmm. And this is all being supported, like uh, the governor of Kevin said, by Uncle Borowa's program. The Uncle Borowa's program is not only for rice, but it's for all the crops that the state believe they can produce. And also, we meet weekly on agriculture in Jigar State. We have a team that we call agricultural team that I head. Every week I have four hour meetings with them. And the chairman Afan, Jigar State is always there. And in the local governments they have these similar meetings and the chairman of Afan in those local governments are always there. So we carry the farmers along in everything we do in most of the states. I know this for Kevi, I know this for Kano, and most of the state we interact. We, change, uh, we exchange ideas uh, to, to see how we can boost agriculture. But uh, I believe maybe his, uh, his uh, presidents in the states are not briefing him well <laughs> on, what is happening, on, what is happening, on what is happening in the state. Yes. But okay. I think there is a real very good uh, network and very good clear uh, respect a relationship built by Avan and other private sector. We have about five or six rice mills coming up, and all built by the private sector because of the synergy. And we have private sector supporting our farmers on our grower program. They give the seed like we do, the government gives them all this, and buy the rice or buy the commodity from them as an out grower. So there is the heavy, heavy engagement of the private sector. Okay, uh, let, let's go back to the phones now and hope that we can get this call through from that. This time from Lagos, Nura is calling in from Lagos. Hello, Nura. Yeah. Hello, good evening, sir. Good evening. I am calling from Lagos. Hmm. Yes, I like this program. Uh, this is uh, a I like everything where you talk. I like how. Well, there goes that call. Well, I encourage you to call back. And uh, this is what we uh, said earlier on in the program. Just go straight to the point. You you, you don't know when uh, that might end up as a dropped call. So um, let's encourage those who are calling in to go straight to the point so they can uh, state their case as quickly as possible uh, to avoid uh, the syndrome of these dropped calls. But, yes, back to the studio here. And the issue has been, yes, there is a policy, a roadmap given by the federal government. But well, would you say that it is entirely like um, the president of uh, All Farmers Associ Associations says? Would you say it is skewed? I'm, I'm using the same word. Is it skewed towards the public sector? 
Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and I think I'm very happy that this question is coming up. And uh, I want to say that uh, the current policy we are running is only government enabled but private sector driven. Mm -hmm. And I would like to cite Chief Mbaka himself. This is the first time I've been in the civil service for over 30 years, close to 32 years. This is the first time we are having the widest consultation in the development of this policy. It took part, we were there for almost three weeks, sitting and discussing this policy. We had a dialogue with all sectors, with the private sectors, with the producers, with the processors. This policy is being driven by the private sectors. And let me quickly address some of the issue, issues he mentioned. Let's take, the, for example, the Anchor Bora program. And I want to commend, and I will want to also congratulate His Excellency, the Governor of uh, Kirby State, for chairing and for driving on behalf of the federal government of Nigeria that Anchor Borrowers uh, program, which I'm sure Chief Mbaka is very, very familiar with. Mm -hmm. The farmers are private people. They borrow money. Those who are making the funds available to them, the fund is being, available, is being made available to them through the MSME Development Fund. It's channeled through the Bank of Agriculture. The off-takers, they are the private people. They are the processors. Those who are selling the inputs to them, they are the agro-dealers in Nigeria. They are the private sectors. Those who are selling the insecticides and other chemicals to them, they are the private sectors. The bankers that are providing credit to them, the commercial banks, the microfinancial banks, they are the private sectors. And the processors that are processing it, they are the private sector. Now, along this value chain, we are is the government. I'll quickly leave this. And also go to and also explain that the green alternatives covers middle crops. It covers rice, it covers wheat, it covers cashew, it covers tomato, it covers livestock, it covers aquaculture, it covers fishery. It is not skewed okay. towards rice. Before series two, but let me also state that under the green uh, under the anchor borrower program we started with rice because it is low hanging fruit because rice is one of the commodities where we are currently spending i mean where we were spending not less than 1 billion naira to import rice Dollar. we've successfully reduced that mm -hmm. and we are continuing to, 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 to reduce that mm -hmm. and that is why we originally focused on rice we've moved to wheat we are now bringing in livestock and eggs. We are now bringing in uh, the, 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 uh, soybean. And I want to say and to prove this, that Nigeria will soon start, and we have started, and this will soon be officially launched, the exportation of yams. Okay. India has also expressed interest to us to take our pulses. Okay. This we'll, is a tremendous development. We'll, we'll, and the only people that are exporting it, that are dealing with it, they are private sector. All right. Government is only facilitating by supporting them. Good you mentioned the YAMS. We'll come to that in a moment. But uh, we have a, an, another caller calling in from Oweri this time. Wachku from Oweri. Hello, Wachku. Go ahead. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, this is uh, Mr. Wachku. I'm calling from Oweri. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I will uh, comment what Mr. President, the, the President of Farmers Association, I will comment on what uh, his own opinion. Everything he said was, is, a, is the right thing that the President, Mr. President should do. That's it. Hello? All right. Is that all? So, this is my comment. Okay. Thank you very much. 
okay? And uh, we hope you stay on the program so we can get more out of you. Right, so uh, let, let, let's come to you. Now, you say you know that um, uh, there are gaps in here. What would you or the association have the government, the administration, do differently? Well, um, thank you very much, uh, Cyril. You see, um, I became appreciative for the continuity as stated ab initio in trying to show that the previous administration and the present administration, there is no gap as, you know, when it concerns agriculture. If you read the Green Alternative, it will tell you that it is continuation of ATA program, that there is no difference. Okay? Now, in that ATA program, it is the continuity. ATA program built on the previous administration on commodity initiatives. We had maize initiative, we have soybean initiative, that was during uh, Chico Basanjo's regime. And then when uh, Yanadua came, with immediate past, you know, president, His Excellency Gulo Jonathan, they continued from those initiatives. And that was why we were getting increased. In. So I really commend the continuity as mentioned and reflected in that green alternative. Mm -hmm. But the lacuna is there in the implementation details and execution strategy. If the previous administration carried along all sectors of agriculture. And then this one is emphasizing on rice. Let me reveal to you. A bag of maize now, I am in the poultry subsector, okay? A bag of maize now, embarrassingly, here, goes for 20,000. Okay. okay? Now you collect this thing. There are other factors involved. Let us not paint rosy picture. Because the skirmishes we have Within the Saminaka area, where we know is the headquarter of maize, definitely impacts on the maize price and availability. So we have to address that issue. We can't paint pictures. Right. Now, if you now see the soya, we are saying later, nothing waits. Agriculture does not wait, both in budgeting, and that's why we said agriculture cannot be dependent on budget. We had a partnership. In fact, we came out to your own knowledge that it was farmers' initiative that we floated the three multi-commodity development and marketing companies. Okay? We did not stop at that. We brought in a funding window so that it will not be when we wait for World Bank to give us money, we will start a program. The R&D component of agriculture, which I said and hammered on research and extension, which is research and development, is funding. And this funding was developed, this uh, Nigerian Agricultural Development Fund, the National Agricultural Development Fund. All this we packaged and sent to the National Assembly. It is still in the freezer. And we are talking about development and progression of agriculture. Yes, it is the responsibility of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture not to just start and be in a hurry to make a mark for this administration. The successes have, you know, gained in the past supposed to be sustained, to drive the present so that we can get to our future. All right, we'll return to the issue of uh, the uh, documents you've prepared. Uh, uh, but let's try and get this call in from Ugun State. Jide is calling in from Ugun. Is Jide still on the line? Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello I'm on the line. Yes, go ahead. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The issue about Nigeria, the issue is what you are doing that is not known. What you are doing that is not known is that there is a mistake in Laguna with the agrarian sector. The farmers who are just not the public sector, not part of the public sector, are suffering all their policy. Their policy is not working for the private sector. According to the Afghan, Chairman, he will know exactly what has been the, pro the problem of all the policies, budgeting, and all they were doing at the ADP is not working for the common farmer, for the peasant farmer in the village. All the work you are calling anchor is being frustrated by the commercial 
Northern only in the northern part where the northern state government are supporting anchor without necessary capacity is where only anchor is working in the southwest anchor is not working because there is no support from the state there is no backing of the state it's not so the point of the government the, uh, the, the anchor who are not having the capacity as big as bigger company or all the other country farms are suffering to, to be able to undergo that process. The capacity the banks are having, no ordinary anchor can lift it up. Because they were asking for one billion, they were asking for this. Where the state are enjoying the program in the south is the ADP charging 20 farmers together to agree. That's not agree. Agree started from a large expanse of land on large capacity to be met before we can achieve anything in the South. The Southwest are suffering due to capacity. No commercial bank is ready to take on to anchor with the, with the Southwest farmers because they don't, they lack capacity, mostly to produce rice. That's what they're suffering Gary now. The more you increase the budget for the state, the worse you get about Gary or the market. The market Gary price of Gary now is growing every day, shooting up to 1,005 per page of Gary in the Southwest. Why is the anchor not cheating this? I agree with the other man. The Northern states have no problem. So their states are more proactive. They are very, very in time for seeing what their people have suffered. They are pushing to back up their own people in the North. But in the South, Mr. Director of Agri is not doing anything to the South where they are not considering that no bank is supporting the decent farmer in the South way. Farmers have been neglected in the South way to the bigger world that they cannot compete with. Please, something has to be done to this to correct and close the gap between the rich and the poor in the South way and allow and remove the capacity building, the collateral you are asking on the anchor. From the southern anchor, southwest anchor of the farmer cannot be met. I'm still saying it. You know, bank was especially Thai bank and then Charlie bank. They were demanding too much anybody can shoot in the southwest to become an anchor or to gather okay. the host of farmers together for achieving this program. Right. As possible as good the program is to take Nigeria and bring Nigeria out of recession, the southwest are doing everything to jeopardize this process. Okay, GD. The federal government uh, has a good foresight in correcting this. It's only the North and states that are benefiting. The South are not benefiting anything. Right. But I can say of the South East, the Niger Delta and all the other rest, that the South West in the Western Zodiac. Okay, GD, you, 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 see, you see, you've mentioned that okay. over and over again. Hello, GD. Um, yeah, you, you've made that point, and, and that's an interesting thing I really want to take up. Hello, GD. Nothing has been done to achieve anything. Right. Let me tell you, the problem of Southwest is land clearing. Yes, GD, you've made the point over and over again. So thanks for, for bringing that up. But we'll now put that, we'll put that situation to, I guess, here. If I understand you correctly, while there's been massive support in the North, for the program, now in the southwest, that kind of support has not been there, and he himself yeah, says that south. the commercial banks are. So the question we'll put is, whose responsibility if the administrations in the southwest do not give a program the support, the needed support? Whose responsibility is it to make them give that support? If uh, <laughs> the administrations in the north <laughs> give a support to a policy. And those in the southwest don't. Whose whose responsibility is well, that? Well, I, I I stand on his own side too, mm -hmm. because um, this is the only opportunity we have mm -hmm. to right our wrong in the past, and that's why I said we should not be mono commodity in this anchor program. Okay. Okay. Now, if the emphasis is on rice, it's not. the the quantity or the quantity of production in other states are not there. 
And this is an opportunity I have to call on the governors of other states, Southeast and South South, right. to see, like in the Southeast, nothing stops the governor coming up to say, I have a program on Arinja Abono, to produce Abono for all of us. I have a program on oil palm for all of us. I have a program on aquaculture for all of us. I have a program on cassava for all of us. Okay. So it is a challenge. Okay. Why the North, we are advising, we are suggesting that the North should not stop at KB and Jigawa. Mm -hmm. Other 19 states, the rest of the 19 states, should come with a blueprint on their agriculture because they don't have any alternative. Okay. The North has no other alternative than to go agriculture because in Jigawa, my chapter, a fan, even went to the extent of environmental recovery. You know, in Kangiwa, yes. you remember, yeah. we recovered 600 and something hectares Hectors. with Jatropa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We recovered that, and the farmers went back to their communities that was sand dune infested. Yeah. They were driven away by desert, and we fought the desert and recovered the desert 660 hectares. Yeah. Okay. His Excellency is here. Go, farmers did it. Yeah. Okay. okay? And we, now, was there any follow-up? It was Dr. Shetima Mustafa who drove this thing. Now, we, sustainability is a problem now. Okay, we'll, okay we'll, that we'll, sustainability, we'll come to the sustainability. Yes, let's see. But, you know, Jatrufa has biofuel well, and everything. Yes, it's an, an economic area. Yeah. Please, I suggest that we replicate it okay. in other states of the north. Okay, yeah. Let, we'll come to that. It's, a, it's an important issue we've raised. But let's go back to Kebi, where we have uh, Umar Anachi calling in. Go ahead. Yes, good evening, Mr. Zero. I'm Umar Anachi calling from Vernon Kebi. Yes. Uh, honestly, agriculture is the backbone of any country, economic wise. And uh, I think the way this administration handles agriculture did not give the required attention it deserves. Honestly, this AMCO borrowing program is a well and good design when it comes to paperwork. But when it comes to implementation, that is where the problem is. And I think what is being reported to His Excellency about the whole program in KB State contradicts what is there on the reality on ground. Honestly, the small scale farmers have not received the required financial assistance by the government. The Ancon Brewing Program, the first consignment, many farmers have not even received part of the money that they're supposed to get for the first consignment. The second consignment, it has not even been implemented. So I think there is need for His Excellency to go and take the people that he entrusted in implementing this uh, uh, Ancom borrowing program in KB State. It has not been implemented properly. Uh, uh, and I want to report to His Excellency that farmers in KB State are abandoning their farm land because they cannot continue to maintain them. They, they cannot afford to buy fuel to continue watering them. So they are abandoning their farmland. Their assistance is, 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 is not there. Honestly, I have, I have some, some farmers that even came to me. They said, if I can buy their own farmland, well terminated, but they cannot afford to continue. So if this is the way that we are going to implement this thing, we cannot get it right. I think there is need for his excellency with due respect to take the people that he entrusted the implementation of this AMCOM growing program in Kevin State. May God continue to bless our country, Nigeria. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Umar yeah. Anachi, calling in from uh, Vernon Kebi. Well, at this point in time, we'll take a short break. When we return, there will be more on driving agricultural production, especially with the current administration heading into its second year of being in office. Stay with us on NT Tuesday Live. We'll be back shortly. Nigerians. 
our fearless officers and men of the Nigerian military are winning the war against Boko Haram. Today, all occupied territories have been recovered and Boko Haram has been degraded. Our affected brothers and sisters are getting their lives back. However, they are now after you and me. In our mosques, churches, schools, motor parks, markets, entertainment centers, and public gatherings. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria Unite Against Terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, the people, great nation. Play -o. Make you report any crooked person, object, or wakajube movement to police and security agent demo. The security of our nation now work for all of us, so plus including me and you. Nigeria, make we unite against terrorism. Na Federal Minister of Information and Culture bring on this message. <laughs> Network Issue Oriented Innovation Talk Show. Thanks for staying with us. The focus tonight is on agriculture. And just before the break, we had a call from Kebi, where uh, Umar Anachi um, uh, called in to air his views on uh, particularly aspects uh, of the Anchor Boras program. So, back in this segment, we start off by um, going to uh, the governor of Kebi State to respond to some of the issues that uh, Umar Anachi raised. Thank you. I think just to clarify that Anko Borowa's program is a program whereby Central Bank of Nigeria, through participating financial institutions mostly, and in the case of KB Bank of Agriculture, provide financial resources available to farmers on a model build up for that state. It differs from one state to the other. For example, in Kebi State, the model that was developed for rice is that a farmer who has a hectare of rice can borrow up to 210,000. A farmer with one hectare in Eboyi is entitled to borrow more than that because land clearing in Eboyi is higher. So that's what the model was. The role of the state government is to help the rice farmer associations get organized so that their land can be identified, coordinates taken, registered, trained before they meet the conditions to assess the Anko borrowers program. The disbursement of the loan is 
made by the participating financial institution to the farmer, not to the state. The state has never, has never been given any component of the uncle borrowers program. So in the case of KB, the first set of 78,000 farmers who are registered through the uh, uh, program management team set up by the Central Bank, Bank of Agriculture, state government, they received sums of money from uh, Bank of Agriculture. Not all received 210,000 because they don't need it. Some received water pumps, some received fertilizer. 210,000 is the maximum you can borrow. It does not mean a farmer needs, who does not need to borrow should take all of it because he's just exaggerating. Uh, so that is how the model works. And we are pleased that the pilot program, which was done to test how the Uncle Borrowers program can work, achieved significant success in A, uh, getting those farmers mobilized to produce and mobilizing other farmers who are not even in the Uncle Borrowers program. Because like I said earlier, in our estimate, which has been uh, estimates by other uh, institutions, shows that the value of output created from the money we in KB borrowed, which is 14 billion, out of which we have already repaid about uh, 6 billion, uh, was over 100 billion naira. Again, I, I want to use this opportunity to also comment on the uh, remark by the president of APAN about attitude in response to a question from Ogun State. The platform was created equally for every state. But some states have maybe a sense of urgency differs. Some states have economic activity that levels that differ from others. And therefore, maybe the, 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 the value of the Uncle Boros program might be higher in some state than it is for others. For example, I know governors who have visited the Ministry of Agriculture maybe 20 times, 20 times in order to pass track access to, uh, and I'm not suggesting that uh, those other governors do not have priority or, or the interest of their farmers at heart, but, but because maybe the farmers are more organized and maybe the farmers have more access to other alternative sources of finance, the aggression with which the Uncle Boros uh, was pursued across the country is not, uh, is not a north versus south issue. You can find a state in the north that is not as aggressive as other states in assessing the Uncle Boros program. All right, well, let, let, let's bring you back into this conversation, uh, Rashid. And yes. uh, now, uh, the, the, uh, the comment has been made um, about how much benefit the private and the public sector derives from this. And I, I've got to put it to you as well. Um, what's the scope of your intervention and your advice to the farming population in the different parts of the country, across the country? And uh, how much of this do you think has been beneficial to particularly? Because you, you said you deal directly with the, with the farmers. And so... Uh, yes. <laughs> well, as I've said initially, uh, the seasonal rainfall prediction uh, is uh, being uh, presented at the national level here in Abuja. Yes. At the beginning of the year. So let's go to the different yeah. components so of the country. At the beginning of the year, all the stakeholders are invited and they participate in the uh, presentation. Then we go to the states. And then we have our representatives there in each state. We have the state met inspectors who take charge of the states, down to the local governments. What we do is we give them the, which is this, the, the seasonal rainfall prediction, this is the booklet, and they meet the ADPs, that's Agri uh, Development uh, program. program Officers, and then the Extension Officers. They, they will train them on how to interpret the scenario for prediction because we want to see that in, 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 into the different uh, languages now. For instance, in the north, we want it to be in the Hausa language. In the south, 
maybe in the southwest, the Yoruba, the Igbos, and, and such. So our offices go down this much uh, to attend to the rural farmers. Two, we have the apps which uh, the enlightened people can uh, assess. Uh, you, we have two major uh, operating systems. Through the Android, you, use, you go to the Google Play Store, and then you say Nimet SRP, and then you can have the seasonal rainfall prediction in details, and then even our daily weather pr presentation. Then our then you use the the Apple uh, iOS uh, i2 to through that you Nimet SRP through that too you can get though. Through the Android is free, but using the Apple, maybe right. they make some small uh, <laughs> deduction from you. They take some right. amount. Then again, we 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 give to the radio houses. In fact, as I, I'm talking to you now, our director general, which uh, uh, Professor Abubakar Sanimashi, uh, whom I'm present we're presenting here, uh, and gave us the directive, which I've already done. In fact, all the governors of the country, that's that six state governors plus Abuja, and then the uh, ministries that are involved as those of our stakeholders in the agri water resources and the rest of them. We've taken this uh, scenario for prediction to their offices, and they've acknowledged. Mm -hmm. I, I believe it has gotten to all the states. So by so doing, we are getting closer and closer to the uh, farmers, although uh, it's not that our duty. Ours is to say this and that. But we still felt we too will want to participate in uh, disseminating this information because the more we do that, the better is for the okay. the country, yes. All right, back to the phone lines. We have uh, calling in from Kanu is uh, Idris. Hello, Idris. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah. Well, we'll drop that call. Now, we're still talking about um, uh, the services provided by NIMIT. And, uh, well, can your association acknowledge the benefits of these services? Sure. Uh, we have been collaborating with NIMET, both at the federal, the state, and the local government. They have visited. We always participate at their annual takeoff, mm -hmm. and then they follow up with our state chapters and the local government coordinates. One is to give the prediction, and then we will start interpreting. Because naturally, the farmers you will see at the community level, they are experts at reading the weather. So what they produce, we augment with their basic knowledge, traditional knowledge, and guide them. For instance, that flood that we had that time, you know we work together with the World Food uh, Program to tell our farmers, especially those who went down to the Fadama plain to farm. And you know farmers, when they farm and they have high yield, you know the Fadama plain, the river banks, naturally, when there is erosion, they carry the eroded topsoil down. And before the water moves into the main body of the water, is filters off the topsoil. So the bank itself is the richest place you can farm. So when farmers come there, they will like not to be going back to their community. They will want to establish their houses there. And incidentally, this uh, weather is always periodical. It's not consistent. And if it comes, it washes them away, especially when there is rise on the tide. So NIMET has been collaborating with us. It's not a question of opening the dam in Cameroon to come down. All right. There is always rise when you have the peak of the rain. Mm -hmm. Okay? So it is the responsibility of the NIMET to educate us. And my organization, which is All Farmers Association of Nigeria, will alert our farmers, including the fish farmers. Because they will go there to farm, put their fish in small, small cages. When the flood comes, it washes everything away. <laughs> So it's not only the crop farmers, the fish farmers themselves. So their intervention has been assisting us in guiding our members so that they will recover their efforts and investment, okay. not losing it to right. the vagaries of weather. 
Okay, let's uh, go back to the phones. We have calling in from Abia, Sunday. Hello, Sunday. Good, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I want to contribute on this. Yes. I, uh, some time ago, around January, I already started with the anchor borrower in mm -hmm. Omaha. Mm -hmm. Then when I went back to ask them how far they have gone, the manager told me that they have reduced uh, the commodity they came to have a sale to do. Then I went back to he told me that they have reduced it again to one. That as he's talking to me now, that he is having a meeting with the uh, uh, with the CBN in Omaha. Then, after some time, I went back. He told me that that's a difference between what I had over the television and radio concerning the anchor borrower and what is on ground in Omaha concerning the anchor borrower. As I'm talking to you now, none of us benefited from it in other states. I mean, the real farmers. So how can we proceed? Which way forward? Please tell me. On the television, but the real farmers is what I'm talking about. All right. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay. All right, Sunday. Th thanks for calling. The director here will respond to the issue you've just raised. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Sunday. Uh, let me quickly say, like His Excellency, the Governor of Kebi, he mentioned the other time, Governor Bagudu, uh, there are several procedures which a state must pass through before you can participate in anchor Bora programs. One, you must have the off-takers. Two, you must have the organized farmers. Three, you, your, uh, you, you, the governor of your state must be able to express interest through a written letter to the central bank governor. Four, the farmers must be trained. Five, there must be input providers. So once we all have this, the first thing we will have to do is for the state government to express interest to the governor of Central Bank that I will be producing plantain in Abia, I will be supporting maize production, I will be supporting any other value chain. Then there must be off taker for these produce. Once we have the produce, uh, we have, once we have the off-takers, those who we take, who we buy, who we take up, take up this hmm. from the farmers at the end of the season, at the end of the production, we must have them. The next thing will now be for the farmers to be trained the farmers will be trained majorly on three areas. One, on the crops they want to produce. Two, on financial education or financial literacy, so that they will know that this money they are taking is not government money. They are borrowing it. Then, there must be the Bank of Agriculture or any other bank through which the funds will be channeled. Okay. Now, this fund is coming from a fund known as MSME Development Fund, Small Medium Enterprise Development Fund, which is 225 billion fund created by the Central Bank of Nigeria. The funds for the off-takers to procure this after the farmer must have produced <coughs> is coming from Commercial Agriculture Credit Scheme, CARDS. So, like His Excellency mentioned, and Siri Stober also mentioned the state government must first express interest and identify uh, produce which the state government will want to support. Okay. Let me state that the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is currently facilitating anchor Bora program on livestock and eggs in most of the southern parts 
of the countries. We are also in the process of facilitating for Oyo, Ogun, and some other states maize production. And I feel I should address this to erase the belief that Anchor Bora program is only concentrating on, uh, it's, only concentrate, uh, it's only focusing may, uh, and, and rice or, or the north alone. Just to quickly use this advantage to also commend NIMET that uh, on behalf of my minister that we are working with NIMET, we are one of the stakeholders we are, uh, that work with NIMET. We are passing the, uh, the ag agro meteorological information to NAERLS. And NAERLS is di disseminating it through radio, through jingles. I also want to state that climate change is real. And as a result of this, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has developed National Agricultural Resilience Framework. And this is one, our National Agricultural Framework Resilience Document is the best in Africa. It is now being adopted across the West African country. We developed it with our farm and with the farmers, and we are currently disseminating it, making it available. Through prompt information, we are now advising the farmer. We are now making drought tolerant varieties of uh, uh, seeds available to farmers. We are, now, we are now also making available flood tolerant varieties of uh, rice available to farmers. We are now disseminating, it, disseminating this through extension information. In order to, est to ensure that we will reach more farmers, we are now using e-extension system, a situation whereby a farmer can pick his phone and get the information. This is what we are currently doing, information are reaching the farmers. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. At this point in time, we'll take our cameras out to the people and try to find out just what they think about uh, boosting crops under the current federal administration. Let's take a look. You know that before the war, Malaysia came to Nigeria and collected pan seedlings. Now they are among the biggest import, uh, exporter of pan, uh, uh, pan uh, 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 produce. Where is Nigeria? Everybody has abandoned agriculture. We are going to oil and contract and the politics. God has done in this world, the most endowed country in the world is Congo, followed by Nigeria. When it comes to mineral resources, we have fertile soil, we have good climate, 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 but nobody's interested. Nigerians don't want to soil their hands. Everybody wants to get contracts. You understand me? Where you make up to 500 percent profit so agriculture has no is no is there is no priority at all for that nigerians don't want to farm i believe that if 10 percent of nigerians we commit we 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 we, we, we farm we go to farm then the country we we, we the hunger will be driven away if we want to compete with some other part of the world in agriculture we should look at um, mechanization. Uh, we cannot use our hands to do anything and get anything from the farms. We have to mechanize our agriculture. So now that the government is talking about um, diversification of our economy to agriculture from oil, we should look at mechanization. That is the only way we'll come up to speed. And besides that, the government should have good policies in sharing of fertilizers. Fertilizers don't get to the people that need them. If the federal government is getting fertilizers for farmers, there should be a policy that this fertilizer should go straight to the local government areas where the farmers are, so that at the end of the day it will get to the hands of the farmers. Because when we have a lot of middlemen in between, at the time the fertilizers are getting to the farmers, so to say, they are too expensive for these farmers to buy. And so they go without it, and so the yields are low. It is only when we are sure with the government policy that these fertilizers are getting to the farmers that will get a better yield. 
couple with mechanization of the agriculture. With this, I think we can compete with other nations like Malaysia and others. If they can solve the importation, it will help. And also our farmers, if the government can loan them money to empower them in the area of their farming, at least it will help. When you talk of uh, boosting agriculture in Nigeria, you first of all look at the, those things that are in place first and uh, how to improve on them. And I'm telling you, one of the serious issues that we're lacking in this country is maintenance culture. I said this because I know that, uh, take example of Niger State particularly, there are Fadama land all over Niger State, like a Badegi rice mill, you understand? Initially, when we were young, if you go to those places, if you see the type of rice that are cultivated in that place, you will feel as you want to be a farmer for your life. But now, if you go to those areas now, you understand, things are just like an ISO. The moment of uh, President Bwari need to focus on is to give more support to Fadama areas. And at the same time, we have an, an able leadership of Fadama in the person of uh, Tayo Adewumi is somebody that has the plight of agriculture in Nigeria. What the government is supposed to do now is to give him support. You understand? There are areas that you need to, 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 to boost in terms of agricultural development. But if you say that you, want to, you are improving agriculture, you understand, on the lip service, it will go nowhere. Nigerians speaking out of uh, about uh, in boosting agricultural production. Two key issues came out there. First, the question of uh, a key input, fertilizer, and uh, the question of uh, sustainability. But good enough, we have here uh, Governor Abubakar, who is chairman of the Presidential Committee of Fertilizer, and he will give us an update on that. Well, I, I believe uh, the issue of fertilizer uh, is no more an issue, and I'm sure the chairman Afan will confirm that. Uh, today, uh, we are selling fertilizer explants to the agro dealers, and indeed, most of the Afam uh, presidents are agro dealers in different blending plants uh, at 5,000 naira, and they have to sell at 5,005, and uh, that has been very successful. The fertilizer is available in abundance. We are doing 1 million tons this year with the uh, possibility of uh, increasing it to 1.5 million tons next year and uh, the same price of 5000 as well. Uh, for sustainability, we, are, we have been looking ahead. We have been to Morocco just recently to see how we can build more urea plant locally here and to see how we can develop our uh, phosphate deposit in Sokoto and Ogun so that uh, we will also have enough more raw materials here and that will probably reduce the cost of production for us and uh, increase the appropriate of the farmers because then price might be reduced if this is achieved. So fertilizer is not an issue. Uh, it's available, available at 5,005, and we have telephone numbers there. If you are asked to pay more than 5,005, you call us and we will be there. And also, uh, the quality is good and super good. Uh, in recent times, we arrested two or three adulterators, and we asked also, I, I want to use this medium to ask the public to help us, support us uh, in finding out those adulterators. Because once fertilizer has been adulterated, the quality or the productivity will not be good for the farmers, and that will make the farmer lose a lot of money. Okay. Well, just, just for the purposes of emphasis, uh, beyond the price issue, in the past, we used to hear that uh, the fertilizer would get to the farmers at a time that is not opportune. That's been taken care of, has it? Yeah, certainly that has been taken care of. We started production in February, which means uh, the peak period for buying fertilizer is coming around this time, from May till July, depending on the state or the, the, the area 
where the fertilizer is being bought and we have enough stock to be able to sell to the farmers. Uh, I believe up till now I have not uh, gotten any report of uh, shortages of fertilizer in the market and uh, currently we have also a lot in the blending plants waiting for farmers to buy. Okay. Well, uh, Prince Ubaka. Well, um, you see, we, we saw today from the back. Okay. Why did I say so? We initiated, you know, in collaboration with IFDC, we floated the Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers Association of Nigeria, which over the years past, they were interest group who were involved in fertilizer cartel, importing fertilizer. But today, uh, we want to announce to the nation that nobody will be giving any uh, what do you call it, LOC or whatever, <laughs> go and import LPO. fertilizer, LPO <laughs> or anything to go and import fertilizer. Oh, because LC. we have the Indoroma and Notore here, and we have blending plants established years back in different zones and different states. So the efforts which was pushed that made the government to wash up its hands in the provision of fertilizer, it is private sector driven now. That is why you see the governor where we're meeting. The challenge we had was the adulteration and the price, the cost. Uh, we met and then came out with that. Most of the things we have been doing in the, in the dark is manifesting now. Okay. Yes. And uh, it started and it's being sustained. So that availability is there. And we took into consideration the fact that farming season are not unitary. The ones in the south, the rain starts first, and they start farming first. Then in the north, the peak is between May, June, July. And all these things have been taken into you know, uh, cognizance. Our chapter chairman are encouraged to register with the blending plant as the outlet because they know the farmers. So that destroyed the middlemanship. Okay. Because yep. our, our chapter chairman know the people who need the fertilizer. Not all commerce thing, I am a farmer. Then give me a location. You may be a farmer, yes, but a livestock farmer. You may be a farmer, yes, <laughs> but aquaculture farmer. <laughs> but you want quick money. It is the season for fertilizer. You want to invest and get. No, it is not meant for you. That has been corrected. All right. Yes. One very good achievement of the current administration, mm -hmm. which the Federal Ministry of Agriculture has also pioneered, with fertilizer, is the development of the soil map. Mm -hmm. We now have soil specific fertilizer. Gone are those days when we use the same fertilizer for Kebi, for Yo, for rivers. But now, with the designing and the development of soil map, we are now able to make available the ingredients needs based on different states and based on geopolitical zones. And with this, we've been able to improve productivities. His Excellency, the governor of Diga was just saying that rice production per hectare has increased from what used to be less than two tons to about eight tons per hectare. This is the miracle of the soil map. All right. There's also another key input here that we were talking about, and let's uh, come to uh, uh, Governor Bagudu on that matter. And that has to do with uh, improved seedlings and yes. making them readily available to Prince Ubaka and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and his nation, mm -hmm. uh, in quotes now. Yes, I, I think we are, the nation has done well in terms of the availability of research institutes who are quite hardworking, but what has been missing is what is being corrected now. Seed development cost money and propagation and uh, patenting of seed is, a, is, a, is an intellectual activity that has to be protected. Otherwise, you lose the you lose the benefit of your own research. The major seed companies of the world 
Monsanto, Sagenta, thrive on intellectual uh, protection of seed. Seed is no longer a self-replicating organism that a farmer produces and the next year he uses again, but it's a patented uh, 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 product that is protected. Therefore, we need more funding to support the research institutes that we have, IITA, Nigerian Serial Research Institute, and a lot of them across the country we, whom we have, with whom we have been interacting, we and the farmers associations, we have seen significant abilities. But uh, the funding to commercialize, to protect, and made available is, is a, and, and on that, it's very, very important f as a nation for us to even recognize that seed security is at the heart of agriculture mm -hmm. because genetically modified seeds that are being patented have the effect of destroying vegetations, destroying uh, um, uh, non patented uh, com uh, seeds in, in a location. And therefore, we need to regulate more. We need to pay attention more so that we can protect our own seed market. Now, the, this issue of uh, the patenting of seeds is one that many Nigerians are worried about because uh, what they're saying is that isn't this another way where those who hold the patent can continue to hold it to ransom because you have no you have no choice. They provide the seeds that you use now. It's not something you can replicate next year. Oh, the farmer can easily uh, use again. So, isn't that a way of still controlling your agriculture? How do you how do you break free? Well, uh, the issue of seed business is a, a different line of business. That is where the research institutes which we have up to 21 of them in you know, agricultural related marriage. Yes, you know, research institutes. And it calls our attention now. If we are going to agriculture and we want to diversify our economy, we must concentrate, as I made an opening statement, on research. And seed and seedlings, because most of these research institutes produce seeds. Then some of them, like the NIFO, they are and the uh, cream in at Ibado. There are three crops, so they produce seedlings. And if they are not supported, one way or the other, if they are treated as public sector uh, and they are for promotion, then to have academic promotion, they are not businesslike. Yeah, but so why are the commercial? Coming, why, why, why are the why, why okay. we are we are now the farmers themselves, because what the seeds meant for the arid zone mm -hmm. cannot thrive well in the rain, rainforest zone. Right. But what the seed companies are doing, they will produce one seed for the whole nation. Then you go and plant it's over super three, over super two. You will plant it in Samenaka. Then you will see the Arabs aggressive marketing. Making people to take the same over super two in the southeast. So farmers themselves now, we find out that there is specialization and specification. We have an approach, and that approach is community-based seed multiplication program. Now, this research institute will produce the breeder seed. Now, after the breeder seed, you have the foundation seed. Then after the foundation seed, you have the seed that we plant. Okay? Now, these are the steps of seed production. Now, if it comes to the uh, three crops, you have the seed, you have the grafting approach. So the seedlings are now monitored. But bringing everything together when you talk about patency, mm -hmm. the patency as it is being done in other clients. In Brazil, that's why they have a matter in Brepa, which is the research institute. The Brepa. Then a matter in Brazil is the extension and is pluralistic. It is not public sector skewed. 
the private sector come to advertise. We are coming. In China, it is the same thing. In India, it is the same thing. Even in Israel. So you find out that the research departancy goes to the research institute. But as we are talking today, Kren Badegi cannot say we have... Oh, Kren Badegi. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, NCREM, the National Serial Research Institute. Mm -hmm. Even the Kren Ibadan, Koko Research Institute, cannot boost of having patency. Nagredev, the, the one that bans our gem seeds, cannot say we have patency. Okay, but well, may I just ask this? Why would you think that the private sector is not willing to support these research? Yeah, let me let me quickly come into this. I think uh, His Excellency has made a very good point. You know, originally there is a seed regulation body in the Nigeria, which is known as National Agricultural Seed Council, all over the world and in line with international best practice. There are three classes of seeds. The research institute holds the breeder seeds. The national agricultural seed, national agricultural seed, holds the foundation seed. While the private seed companies hold the planted plantable seed, which is known as the certified, certified seed. Yeah. But over the time, if you look at the way it is being done in interna uh, internationally. Siri Stober can decide to develop a seed of a uh, guinea corn that will be tall, that will have a lot of protein, that will have a lot of fat, that will be, can be used for tool, that can be used for varieties of menu. But it was discovered that because we are over regulating it in the hand of national seed service. Mm -hmm. That is why most of the private sectors are being discouraged from going mm -hmm. to private seed company. Okay. This now explains why we have now made it necessary for any Monsantos, for any seed companies, for any assist company to have the ability to commission a research institute to develop any seed that can give appropriate description he may like, mm -hmm. that is the phenotypic expression he may like, that is a dwarf sorghum, a tall sorghum, high protein sorghum. Okay. And once you are able to this, you will now have patterns to eat for you to be able to market it and for you to be, to be able to leave the to, to reap your investment over the seed. Thank yes, you very much. But, but briefly also on uh, production, uh, the, the question you raise on how cost is being transferred to the farmers because of payment of royalties. I think the government is not unaware of that and most of the state have taken the initiative to start their own research institute for seed production specific to their own state and also have a seed production companies. Uh, he knows in Jigawa we have a research institute that is having very good collaboration with the Embarapa he mentioned in Brazil for our seed production. And we have seed processing companies and I know some of these states are doing that. It's the kind of service that we give to the farmers also in cost reduction. So I'm sure the federal government is doing the same. Uh, most of the state governments are doing the same to encourage the farmers to get the seed without necessarily paying high price uh, or extra royalty to the seed producers. All right, we've, got, we've only got a few minutes left here, but uh, there's one aspect which I really must touch on, and that's um, the desirability of all-year farming. Uh, so we move away from the issue of the seasonal thing. How much progress have we made towards ensuring all-year farming? I think a lot of progress, except of course it comes at a price. Yeah. Because once you expand production of uh, farming activities, it uh, reduces the land available for other occupations. <laughs> and if uh, the the oil air farming does not take on into consideration the need of other. Uh, components of the agricultural value chain, like animal husbandry, right. and then you run into a potential crisis. So 
we, we but we advocate and encourage the evolution okay. of uh, relationship for that in all your farming they, they are, there should be more collaborative effort with other users of the land so that uh, uh, the crisis that tend to affect uh, joint production will be avoided. Right. Of the matter of work uh, yeah, right now. Yes, I, I think the federal government also is doing well. Uh, they have started working on desilting most of the dams, uh, desilting most of the channels through trimming projects, I know, you know, and also the project developed by African Development Bank. Uh, I believe uh, we have a lot of water resources potential that they are working seriously on to improve and to improve the channelization that will bring irrigation, uh, expand the irrigation infrastructure around. Uh, we have done that uh, in most of the state. Uh, we have increased our irrigation infrastructure over the years uh, tremendously, uh, giving more opportunities for all year uh, farming. Of course, we have to look. In, uh, we have to take into consideration, like uh, exactly what uh, uh, Governor Atiku said, uh, the other needs of the other farmers. But uh, I think there is tremendous progress on increasing uh, uh, irrigation infrastructure across the country, and uh, that helps for to develop all your uh, uh, farming. Okay. We, we we have done in uh, in about uh, 40, 45 thousand hectares for instance in Jigawa we have done three cropping this year we, we have done wheat we are now on rice and we will certainly plant uh, uh, again and at the rainy season so there's three cropping a year and about 40,000 hectares and we are doing more next year and I know most of the state are doing the same well, just to quickly say yes. that the federal government is now unaware mm -hmm. of the importance of irrigated uh, uh, agriculture in fact it is higher so okay. we're working with Federal Ministry of uh, Water Resources in, in, through the development of downstream irrigation, and we are also working on wash bars, tube well, simple irrigation system that can be managed by Solar the farmers. Most especially the hard dams mm -hmm. are now the focus of the day. Mm -hmm. And where? Well, the all year farming thing is uh, something that, that has been on, but uh, we specifically have to mention today that. Uh, some of the states have adopted the greenhouse approach. Right. Yeah. So the greenhouse approach will sustain certain specification and specialization of production of crops. Mm -hmm. And that will weed off the incursion because what we do practice in Nigeria is open field production. Okay. So we cannot control pests, we cannot control the adjust the weather, we cannot, you know, effectively and efficiently manage the resources. The resources the input resources is not only fertilizer, but the water and the temperature variation and the manipulation of the soil quality. It is the greenhouse approach. If you see in Taraba today, government has bought in, in the greenhouse approach. If you are going down to Lukujana, you will see it, that open field, right. the greenhouse approach. And uh, I know in KB and uh, Jigawa, we have in Gumel, yes, in Gumel, you know, we started the, the system of rice intensification. Yeah. So these are the round the year farming approach. Okay. So we are now moving away from our traditional way of production to a more modern scientific way of agricultural production. All right. Yeah, yes. Well, uh, based on the 2017 uh, scenario for prediction, mm -hmm. we're expecting early onset of the rains and early season, so that the length of rainy season will be short. Okay. So we will have short growing season. So we expect that uh, rain-fed agriculture be supported by irrigation, irrigation agriculture, so that the farmers can have enough uh, products. Right now, the period where does it qualify for the onset? Or? For most part of the country, okay. for, but for the extreme north, we still have some few uh, weeks to. So farmers to there should uh, yeah, tarry a while. Yeah, yes, for the extreme north. Okay. Yes. Well. On a final note, and I'll put this question to uh, uh, Governor Tiku Bagudu, on a final note, mm. can Nigerians look forward to this current administration and say, indeed, it is driving this economy towards increased production 
to bring down to the barest minimum the dependence on this one product, oil? I think there is clarity of policy objective, even though a lot needs to be done. We need a lot of money to fund agriculture. We are having too little money going into agriculture. We spent in the last year the money that spent by the federation to fund uh, oil production and exploration by we, the famous cash call is about nine billion US dollars. In contrast, the money available to agriculture by the commercial agri credit scheme, the ANCO borrowers, and the, and the lending by the uh, banks and budgets of state government is about 1.5 billion US dollars. So for us to get to the promised land, which we believe we need to mobilize more resources and make them available to support production, processing, financing. And I believe we have the way with them to do so. And what we have seen in the last two years, the, uh, the mobilization of stakeholders and investment in the agricultural sector suggests so that it's, it's, it's a dream not far-fetched. How, how optimistic are you from the farmer's point of view? Well, uh, my, my take there Yes. will come from the point of investment security. Okay. Yes. Uh, security. Because the, if the look at, we are the investors. Okay. And we don't feel secure. <laughs> 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 so, and uh, as we are talking today, the way to go, yes. there's organized private sector. All right. Okay. Uh, I head the agricultural trade group in my chamber of commerce. There's a new chamber of commerce. And a lot is being done there. That is a, a one-stop shop for networking. It accommodates every body so that you now know how to manage its agribusiness. All right. We should move away from agriculture as social service to agriculture as business. That's my take. All right. Um well, that's just about all we can take from where, <laughs> except if you have... Just to quickly it. wrap up that, right. uh, I want to say with about 95% confidence in Tava, mm -hmm. that with current land clearing, mm -hmm. extension, input distribution, development of irrigation, provision of agri-equipment, provision of market to the farmers, we are on the way to successful agricultural production okay. in Nigeria. All right, and it is on that note we have to leave this discussion. I always say that no one program can take care of all the issues. We'll be back some other time to review the progress that's been made in agriculture. But for now, we'd like to say a big thank you to all our guests. Uh, Zakaria Udarazo Abdul Rashid, General Manager, Network of Stations, NIMET. Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, please. Prince Ubaka, President of All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Alfan. We thank you for Not always either. responding to our call and sharing your thoughts with us. And uh, for Aziz Miwa Muzibao, who is Director of Agri-Business Processing and Marketing of the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. Well, uh, Governor Badaru Abubakar, Governor of Jigawa State, it's been interesting having you join us here. Thank you very much. And also a pleasure. Uh, to say a big thank you to uh, Governor Abubakar Atiku Babudu of Kebi State. Thank you, Cyril, and all. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also to you as well, we'll say thank you for being part of this program. Next week, we'll reach you again on NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Bye for now.
our programs are getting better and fresher. <laughs>